Welcome to the Mason Library's tutorial on choosing research topics and creating research questions. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to identify the criteria for an appropriate research topic, select a research topic by asking and answering critical questions, and write a strong research question. Sometimes picking a topic is the hardest part of writing a research paper. Here are some ideas to help you during your brainstorming process. Create a list of things that make you angry, sad, excited, or curious. Let's call these points of friction. They might be something you can examine and turn into a research topic. Try doing an internet search to see what information exists on your potential topic. This may help you better understand what aspects of your topic are most important to you. You could also look up current trends or issues in your chosen academic field. Professional newsletters, blogs, and news stories are places to find these. We are going to start with the broad research topic of mental health and college students. Once you have found a potential topic, the next step is to create a solid research question. This takes practice, so be patient with yourself as you learn how to do this. Before we learn how to write one, let's discuss what a research question is and what its function is. A research question provides focus and guides the work we are doing in order to find a solution or answer. There are many definitions of a research question. For example, Hewley et al. define it as perceived knowledge deficit within a subject area or a field of study. Smaller projects like academic papers may only have one research question. Larger projects such as a dissertation may have several connected research questions. So what makes a good research question? According to the Writing Center at George Mason University, a good research question is clear, focused, concise, complex, and arguable. A good research question should also contain neutral language so that you can minimize bias. If a question is clear, it means that it can be easily understood by any reader regardless of their knowledge level about the research topic. If a question is focused, it can be addressed in the page length of your assignment. If a question is concise, it has the fewest words possible. If a question is complex, it can't be answered with a yes or a no or a few facts. It needs multiple sources and ideas. If a question is arguable, it means that proposed solutions are open to debate. When we keep our language neutral, we are helping to keep our research as unbiased as possible. This prevents us from only researching solutions we believe will work rather than finding all of the information available to us. Now that we know what a good research question is, it's helpful to examine what an unsuccessful research question looks like. First, you want to be cautious when researching new trends and events. Topics like new technological advances, new medical treatments, or recent international conflicts may be too new to appear in scholarly literature. You should also avoid ethical questions, like whether something should be legal or if it is right or wrong. Questions like these have no simple solutions and are endlessly debatable. Avoid questions that are impossible to answer. For example, it's impossible to know what some historical figures were thinking unless there is a written record. For example, we shouldn't use a question like what was Socrates really feeling when he drank the hemlock. Instead, we should make a question like how has Socrates' last dialogue influenced modern philosophy? There is plenty of information we can find to debate this question. Questions that are too broad should also be avoided. These tend to be questions that are so broad that researching them becomes implausible. For example, the question, how can we make everyone happy? It's impossible to answer because the answer will vary depending on the person. A stronger question is, what are some of the methods experts have used to study the factors that contribute to happiness? We should also avoid questions that lack evidence. For example, a research question about confidential conversations around national security can't be researched. Binary questions should be avoided. 
Most people think of these types of questions as yes or no questions. These are also questions that posit an either or, meaning that either one thing is true, accurate, or correct, and the other is not. Think about the research question, what art form is more impactful, ballet, or painting? This implies that these art forms are in competition with each other. A better question would be, what factors contribute to people's perspectives about modern art? This is a stronger research question because there is no assumption about the kind of perspectives that will be discovered, nor is modern art in competition with any other kind of art form. Finally, we need to be careful of biased or leading questions. In these types of questions, you already have decided what the solution to your research question is. Let's look at the question, to what extent did the 2006 doping scandal in Major League Baseball affect the public's perception about the integrity of the sport? This question makes an assumption that the doping scandal did change public perception, but we can't possibly know that without doing research. A better question would look at multiple factors around this time or look at the doping scandal more holistically as impacting the MLB. Perhaps it impacted other areas of the sport. A better research question would be, how did the 2006 doping scandal impact Major League Baseball? So how do you narrow a research question? Let's talk about a few ways you can do this. First, you can map out your question and the reasons why you find it interesting. Next, pick what directions are most appealing to you as a researcher. You can view our tutorial on concept mapping for more help with this. There are additional ways to narrow a broad research question. Let's use this research question as an example. What kinds of mental support are provided for college students? This question needs some work. First, let's consider geography. You might want to focus on a particular country or region. Here, we'll focus on the United States. Time is another factor to consider. The preliminary research you have done may help you narrow down the time frame. For our example, we want to focus on how has access to online counseling impacted students since COVID-19. You can also narrow by population, such as college freshmen, by gender, age, race, or ethnicity. We're going to focus on undergraduate students. Next, you can look at nouns in your question and try to make them more specific we're going to focus on online mental support. Finally, you can use the disciplinary approach as a way to narrow your question. Think of this as the professional perspective. A psychologist may have a different way of approaching mental support for college students than higher education administrators. At this point, our research question has become, how have higher education administrators assessed the impact online mental health support has had on undergraduate students in the United States since COVID-19. But let's look at this question again and review the criteria. It's not arguable. How can we revise it to make it so? Let's try this version. What administrative communication techniques are most impactful on informing undergraduate students in the United States about online mental health support since COVID-19? This is now an arguable question because impact may be measured in different ways depending on the goals of an institution. Now we've gone from a broad topic, to drafting a research question, to writing a more narrow research question. Keep in mind that your research question may change as you progress in your research, and that's perfectly fine. This happens to even skilled researchers. The most important thing is to keep an open mind to finding potential solutions even if they weren't what you had in mind when you began. For our example, we noticed a cluster of literature on first-generation college students and decided to modify our research question to focus on that specific population. Now our research question is narrowed further to what administrative communication techniques are most impactful on informing first-generation undergraduate students in the United States about online mental health support since COVID-19. In this tutorial, you learned how to choose a research topic and then turn it into a research question. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have other questions, please refer to our ever-expanding How Do I page or use our Ask a Librarian service.